he is. Welcome to The Basement. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to The Basement. I'm Nolo. Jose, we got a special guest for you guys today. He stood us up once, but he's <laughs> back. Introduce yourself, sir. All right. Um, David Jimenez, I apologize for standing you up last week. <laughs> Um, he cried for like an hour. He cried? <laughs> yeah. I don't believe You're sobbing. I don't believe that. For it's me. the liberal in me. <laughs> when I saw him on Sunday, he laughed in my face when I told him that. I, like, when I told him what, why I couldn't be here. So I really don't think he cried at all. But, yeah. I'm happy to be here, man. Yeah. Um, we, um, we hit you up a few days ago and you came up with the topic of the day. Tell us a little bit about... First of all, I want to know why, um, why this stood out. Um, as something you wanted to discuss, you had mentioned before you were talking to a few friends about yeah, it. Yeah, right. So, a few days ago, I watched this documentary on Netflix called The Rachel Divide. And um, afterwards, like, man, I had some, I didn't have some mixed feelings about, about like, where, she, like, about her position, but I had some mixed feelings about, like, um, how people were coming at her neck and stuff like that. And I was talking to some other friends who had also seen it. Their positions, like, threw me off a little bit. So um, so I had one friend who who was actually, like, okay with the fact that she was, like, transracial or whatever. And I'm like, that kind of took me for a little bit because I'm like, yo, like, she's only allowed to... or. Rather, she's only having this success that she's having right now because she's white. If if a Hispanic or black person pretended to be white, the media would be like, "Yo, this person is wilding," and just like, and that's it. We'd never hear from them again. Like, well, but hold on, wait. Let me read that. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Because <laughs> I don't, Here I didn't watch the whole documentary. I only saw it. Right, right, right. All right. So, as far as I understand, once she got the job at the. Uh, and what is it? And then and the place, ACP, yeah. Um, do you think they thought, oh, she's a white woman higher? Or did they not? Was she ambiguous? Was she racially ambiguous? And they were like, all right, just come aboard. Yeah. I mean, it could be the latter. It could be that she was racially ambiguous. Or it could just be that the that whoever hired her did not do their job in researching her and making sure that she was a black person. Yeah. Or um, Because my, then my question would be, it wouldn't. She wouldn't be utilizing her white privilege to get that job. Then no, she wouldn't have been utilizing her white privilege to get the job. Um, but and to be honest with you, I don't think she's utilizing her white privilege now intentionally. Yeah. I think like it's unintentional. Like whether she realizes it or not, whether she admits it or not, like her white privilege allows her to be where she's at um, currently. Um, what do you her, mean her, her status right now? Yeah, well, yeah, her status right now in the sense that all this stuff happened over a year ago. She was fired, which makes sense. She's not black, so she should yeah. not have been at the head of that particular chapter oh, in the NAACP. Um, so, like, here we are a year later, and, you know, for... For a while, I forgot about her. I forgot that she existed. Uh -huh. But now she's got a book out. Now there's a Netflix documentary out about her. She's the that bread. topic of conversation <laughs> again. She's getting paid for this. like So here we are a year later, and she's still eating off of a scandal that had it been a Puerto Rican, a Dominican, a black person, whatever, like that would have never happened. Yeah. Also, like, uh, a Dominican, Puerto Rican, black person, like, can't walk into, like, an all-white organization and pretend to be white. Like, yeah. they, I mean, well, some of us can't agree with it. Some of us could. <laughs> some of us Puerto Ricans may be able to. I'm a, I'm a very pale-skinned Puerto Rican, so, like, 
I might be able to walk into like a white establishment and pretend to be white yeah. um, until I open my mouth and I begin to talk and then they're like, oh, this kid's not white at all. <laughs> so <laughs> my father, he, he was born in uh, 63, so he's 80 something years old. When he came to the U.S., blue green eyes, jet black hair, the guy by a far distance looks Italian. So he learned very early, just don't. Just don't open don't, your mouth. Don't, don't speak. Because he knew nothing of English. So, right. And, you know, he, he survived those eras. Third Avenue being an industry of uh, factories and, and all these uh, iron works. Right. He, you know, he was able to fit, blend right in just by his look. So, yeah, I could totally relate on that so, aspect. So, let me ask you. Do you yeah. think you have to be black to be the head of the NAACP? I mean, it's a black organization. Um one hundred percent black? No, because if I'm not mistaken, the person that founded it was half black, half white. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I do believe so. I mean, like the whole purpose of it is like black empowerment yeah, yeah. to push forward, um, to uplift the black people, to uplift black culture. And, you don't and think you don't think somebody that's not black can do that? I think someone that's not black can do that. I think there are a lot of people that I mean, are not black. She did it, right? Huh? She did it for a long time. She did. Like, <laughs> yo, when she was in the NAACP, like, so that's one of the things. Like, when I was watching the documentary, like, yo, she was putting in work. Like, yeah. she was putting in work for them, and they were getting a lot of things done. Um, one of the questions that came up in that documentary was, um, was it okay because she didn't really fit this stereotypical black person? Like, she's very light-skinned. Like, yeah. even if she put on makeup or whatnot. Like, um, to the media, like, she's attractive, I guess, in a sense. Where it's like, you know, this is a face or this is a particular um, skin color that we could put forth. And, like... Because of that, maybe like there wasn't as much pushback. Whereas the person who's the head of the NAACP in that chapter now, she's a dark-skinned black woman who's fighting for the same exact stuff yeah. that she was. But yet she gets no publicity. Nobody even knows who she is. And she's in the documentary as well. And like nobody's like putting her in the media. And nobody's like, like nobody knows who she is. Like... So I think Rachel's complexion, her her fair skin, like yeah. kind of allowed her like into that sector, whether like, yeah. So I mean I only saw uh, halfway through it. Actually you just saw it. You're a typical Puerto Rican madly trying <laughs> to squeeze in the exam and all the answers before the test the night before. <laughs> well, I studied weeks before. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it last night. Yeah. And um, I, I drew... Yeah, you too. You studied the what night did before. You think, though? Yeah, but at least I got at least 12 hours in. You got um, 30 minutes before the show. What did you think of it? So I started taking notes because I said... To, so the fact that she was uh, running this organization for so long... Yeah. And no one called her out. Right. No one questioned her blackness or lack thereof before. And maybe, she was... Maybe it didn't matter until she said something. It didn't matter until she was being investigated in regards to this hate mail, right. which was uh, received by another person. And yes, it was sent through official mail channel, you, you know, the post office channels, where hers, if you see the, the documentary, hers doesn't have, it wasn't sent. Right. So anybody, she could have put it in her purse and dropped it in the mailbox. Which is what, in. which is what some people think happened. Right. So, but I want to go back to the fact that she was running this organization, making moves, uh, empowering individuals, and no one of color or of, of, of uh, white ethnicity, no one was calling her out on who she was until she started speaking. Right. In regards to this, it was almost like a witch hunt because the investigation was to sort of... Um, she called it out by calling out this mail, like anybody would, if in fact she didn't create it herself, right? The yeah. question is whether she yeah. created it herself. And 
when you watch the documentary, you kind of get the sense, well, in the beginning of the documentary, you see her in her car, and you see the car has... Um, the, the front windshield is broken. Mm-hmm. You see that she's struggling in light of what happened. But then towards the latter part of the video, she's making moves. She's making moves. She's getting dropped off in a in a in a Mercedes Sprinter, um, doing an interview with Katie Couric, right? Um, she's on the real and the real dogged her, and she's on a book tour. She's on a book tour. So mm-hmm. one of the questions that um, one of the um, the interviewees in the document, the black woman, was saying, I don't know her story. I don't have any backstory. Well, here it is. And what I gathered generally from the documentary was the question is, what makes you black? Is it the color of the skin or the struggle of being part of a a, a, a poverty system and trying to make it out of there and stand up for whoever. So she's her backstory is that I relate to being black because I had siblings that weren't biologically my siblings, but through them I saw the struggle and I could relate to them. Yeah. She grew up with them basically. She grew up with them. So to me we had this conversation about another person of whether or not um the Kish guy, the rainbow guy, um, Oh, Katashi. Katashi Chicklet <laughs> Right, the rainbow chiclet. You know the rainbow chiclets. Remember those. Anyway, so we had that question about him, about him being hood, or you know what I mean. Can he yeah. use the phrase "nigger"? Right? Is he? Well, is does he qualify? The, I don't think anybody wants to use the phrase "nigger." <laughs> no, right? Yeah, like you said it. With the I think it's uh, uh, Like you said it with oh, the hard. Uh. I, had it, I said it the racist way. Yeah, yeah I yeah, just did. You did. So uh, we'll edit that out. <laughs> Um, no, but um, <laughs> so it comes to question as whether or not this character um, is from the hood that would allow him to use this word. Well, I mean, so man, so like, is she black because of her struggles, or is she black because of the well, color? Can, of her can skin? I just say this? When, like I said, we're, we're, we're all Puerto Rican here. Yes, we've. I've okay. Just say with the word nigga. I've never got pressed on that using that word Same before here. ever. Same. I've always heard, oh, you black just like me. Same here. Now, we're not black. No, we're okay, not. Okay, granted, in our past, we've got some uh, ancestors right, right, that are black, right, right. granted. Um, but I wouldn't write on a form of black. I would be Hispanic or whatever, you know, right. Spanish. Um, but like they, like they said, oh, you black just like me. Are they saying that because I have ancestors? Or are they saying that because, oh, you know the struggle like I know the struggle? I think it's... A- Combination. Yeah. I think it's like, and I don't think it's a combination of those two things only. I think it's a combination of the fact, like, yes, we have black ancestry in us, uh, to where we are m- marginalized in a lot of ways as well, just like black people, uh, maybe not to the same extent everywhere. Um, but I also think part of it is like, where you come up. So it's not just one or the other, right? Like, I think it's multiple things. Like, I think about myself. I grew up here in, in Stapleton, in Park Hill. Like, and these are pre- predominantly black neighborhoods. So, like, I'm a Puerto Rican dude coming up being influenced and shaped by the culture and the people that are around me every single day. Um, And yeah, I'm not white. But I still wouldn't identify myself as black. I wouldn't go to that extent because one, I don't think I am black. I don't have the pigment for it. And I think if I was to say that I was black, like people would have an issue with it. Black people would have an issue with it regardless of whether or not I'm Puerto Rican and I came up in the hood like they would look at my skin because that does play a role yeah. like um Rachel Golazal cannot walk into a store and be followed around she probably would not be followed around if she walked into a store because of the color of her skin right like I think to an extent Hispanic and black people are followed around in stores, especially Hispanics that have like a certain look upon them. Yeah. Like, like you cultural, could be, yeah. yes. Like if you walk into a store and you could be a pale spin 
a pale skin Hispanic. Like in New York City, like yo, know, there's so many different cultures and ethnicities here that if you come up in the city, people know whether you're white or not. Like yeah. regardless of how pale your skin is, like I could look at someone's facial features and be like, nah, that person's white or that person's Hispanic. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing. And I, I feel like that's very well. that's very New York thing. Because I've really traveled and I have saw, like, one time I was in Texas and I was like, oh, that guy's Dominican. Mm -hmm. Everybody thought, like, oh, he's Mexican or black or something. I'm like, nah, that guy's Dominican. Yeah. And then when I got to talk to him, he started talking to me Spanish. And he's like, oh, my God. Like, he never saw another Spanish person, like a Puerto Rican or something, right, you know? Right, 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 right. And everybody's like, how'd you know he was Dominican? I was like, he has the look. I don't know how to explain it, you know? Right. He's Dominican. You know? Right, right. He, so, looks, he looked black. Though. Right, but you can yeah. tell right off the jump yeah, yeah, yeah. that he wasn't yeah. black. And, like, I think that's the same thing, like, for, like... White people, Asian people, like they'll look at us and they'll be like, "They're not white. Like, yeah, yeah. they're Hispanic. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, there's some. Yeah, there's something else. <laughs> yeah, like somebody's like, "Yo, the white guy just walked in the store." He's like, "No, he's not white. Follow him. <laughs> Follow him. Follow him. Right, right, right. Right. Put like, a chase on this guy here. <laughs> like, like I don't think that would that has ever happened to Rachel Golas out in the past. Maybe now because everybody knows who she is and she's yeah. wild. I was gonna like, say, yeah, <laughs> like definitely now. Right. Like, so you right think now. you think now she's going to the black struggle? Yeah, you know, so, <laughs> so nah, yeah. I think her struggle now is something totally different. Cause she's feeling it. She's feeling it from everybody yeah, now. Word up, she's not just feeling it from white. Like she's feeling it from everybody. Yeah. Everybody thinks like I'm not gonna say everybody thinks that she's off a rocket because like there are people, which is what which had me wilding when I was talking to some of my friends who are Hispanic, and they're like, yo, like I, I like I, I kind of understand where she's coming from, and I'm like, why? Because she read. Some black authors, or she listened to some hip hop music. Like that's oh, so that's what makes her black now. Right, like, so it goes back to the question that I asked: what What makes her identify as black, and is that acceptable in the black community? Yeah. Well, first of all, the black community is very like they're very they have their lines. They do have that line. You cross that line, you're a pariah. You might as well be a leopard. You know what I'm saying? Right, a leopard, right. Not a leopard. Right. <laughs> well, you'd be a leopard too. Like Kanye. Kanye crossed that line. And now they're like, yo, yo get away, Kanye. Yeah, that's it. Kanye got to do something to get back in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not that it's locked out, but you got to do something. All right. So they um, they have that line. Um, she grew up in an area or not she, an area. Her she life her grew childhood. up in, in Montana, bro. Yeah. So she grew There's up... There's like no black people out there. Sorry. So, no, no oh, you know what's funny? Okay, let me just keep going. So she right. she grew up in a family that was very strict, mm -hmm. abusive. Her parents adopted four black kids. So she grew up with them. Right. So she must have saw the struggle because like you said, Montana, there's no black people. Right, All right. of a sudden, now there's four black kids. Right. So she must have witnessed that struggle. She got molested by her father and her brother, was it? Something like that, yeah. Okay. And her sister too, her black right. sister. Um, so I think for her, she was like... She got abused and molested by this white family. She has nothing to do with her. Right. She found her comfort with her black brothers and sisters. Right. She adopted her brother, was it? One of her brothers? I think so, yes. So her association, and I think this comes down to um, a mental thing, mm -hmm. where it's like she disassociates with that. Right. I am not that. I am what you guys are. I'm with you guys. We're in the struggle together against that. Right. And I think that's where her association with blackness comes. So does her backstory cover her blackness? I don't think she could say I'm black. I think she could say I relate to black people. I don't think she could completely say I'm black because she's not. So, yeah, um, can I just say yeah. something to that real quick? <clears throat> I don't think <coughs> she could say I relate to black people. I think what she can say is like, like you talking about her siblings that were adopted, she can also say I was hurt in a abused by my family like yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm still not yeah. like you know what I mean because even once they get older and they leave that like her family like her parents and stuff like that they're gonna experience and face things that she would never experience yeah. and face like you know what I mean but that doesn't mean that she doesn't have any connection with them her connection with them is the fact that like we were all like um, we were all hurt by my parents yeah I was assaulted and abused the same way that you were. But you know what I mean? Like, that's the, that's where she could, like, like, um, 
level with them, I guess, or like say that she has a connection with them. It's not so much on the, hey, you're black and you got hit by my parents. I'm white, but I also got hit by my parents. So now I guess I'm black. Like that's just not. Like I don't think that's. I, I hear I hear that argument clear on both sides, but let's look. I, I want to stop, pause for a moment, and I, I I like Noel who was playing video games while watching the. The, the special. Um, He's a hater. You That's have funny. to have a hater in your life. Yeah. It's healthy. It's productive. It helps you motivate. We spoke about this in the earlier <laughs> episodes. Um, no, uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that the the production of this documentary, yeah, was very well thought out. Yo, really well thought out. <laughs> all right. So you first of all, you have her in every in every scene that she's with a white person being interviewed. Yeah. her hair is white. Okay. Uh, what do I mean by that? that? It's wavy. It's long. It's it's let loose. Oh, Every other scene, mm-hmm. it's braided, and that's a cup falling. Um, <laughs> it's it's braided. It's um, extensions. And stuff? Extensions. It it there. I don't know if she's wearing wigs, right. but it seems very black. Right. Very made up. Yeah. Okay. The beginning of the story, you see her being poor. Attacked and put them turning into poverty, and then you see her um, coming out of coming that. out of it. Th- right. Then, then, so it, where she decided to stay and live is really uh, racially motivated, right? I believe so. So she's you would have, yeah. So yeah. you would imagine that she's taking this stance, becoming the president of this organization, right? Mm-hmm. And well, that was, particular was, chapter. Of the organization. Right. So she's taking this stance. So already she's a traitor to these, you know, racially charged individuals. White people, yeah. White people. Um, See, I say say the N word the same way I say white people. Very, very straightforward. Like the dictionary. Anyway, so you have... um, Is is it a dictionary? You you have... um, So she's already considered a traitor amongst her own kind. To then now be considered a traitor to the kind she mostly associates with. So basically, she's the like, irony. It's almost like yeah. it's almost like she ran away from sure. North. She ran away from North Korea, and South Korea was like, "Nope, sorry, can't come in." So she's like, "Oh crap!" She looked back. North Korea got the door shut too. She's like, "I'm stuck in the middle now." Right. The Nobody line is like me. so thin. You know, she has very little room to move. The irony for her mm-hmm. must be devastating. But I'm at the sure end of the day, is. I'm sure it is. At man. the end of the day, I think all can agree that the limelight is pretty. Being in front of that cam, yeah. Yeah. getting that coverage, right. it's addictive. No, nah, but she paid for that. You what know, they passed for you years being a, a, the struggle? Like a leper. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody wanted nothing to do with her. She was in her house. She had, you know, whatever, bananas on her car, whatever they did. One scene that stood out to me, right? Was in the church. The guy, the preacher, the person behind the pulpit was, and you would you loved it. You screamed like a cheerleader at a football game, uh, where the 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 person behind the pulpit was saying, "She picked up something oh. you guys been trying to throw away." Damn, no way. Yeah. What's his name, yo? So the the uh, Nation of Islam guy. Um. He's an older guy. No, I don't think it was in the Nation of Islam. I think it was in a. Church, yeah, no, no, it wasn't that. a church, but they they, they, they let him to preach in the church because he talks a lot about black empowerment. Farrakhan, Farrakhan, yeah, it was Farrakhan. Okay, so he said that to the black congregation, You mad at her because she picked up something you threw, you're trying to throw away, All right. which I thought was, was just... a great insight. You know what I'm saying? Right. You guys are trying to shed this blackness away so you could fit into society. And better, I'm sorry, to, but to, to, to thanks for elaborating on yeah. that. But my, my thing also to, to draw back is that. Whether she lied or she created that mail, created that story or not, mm-hmm. her character prior to then should speak to some volume. She was repping. She was fighting. She was protesting, speaking, actively doing something. Yeah. And what's more interesting to me is that when she drives up to the barber shop to get her son a haircut, yeah, yeah, that the part same was hard community that watch. she tried to stand yeah. up for are treating her the same way they were treated by whites. Whereas segregation, 
the barber, you I don't know if it's the barber, and I don't know if the barber is black um, because you don't but see you that. But you hear it, like, but you in hear the audio. in the yeah. background, the barber's like, you can't park here. I could understand for him saying, you can't come into my business. I this is my business. Mm-hmm. That's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. You right. could. They, 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 that's the the choice of the business owner. Right. Um, could they get sued and turn into a civil thing? Sure, yeah, whatever. Right. But this gentleman took it a step further and says, you can't park here. Right. She's like, I just want to make sure my son sees me when he gets out. And he's like, I don't care where your son is. You can't park here. And so she's forced to leave. Right. You know, one would say, oh, she abandoned her so kid. You think no, she's dealing her- with, you're saying she's dealing with a form of racism? Segregation, um, yeah. divide. Uh, yeah, by, 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 by the very... By the very uh, cultural background that she st- she continues to stand up for. Wow. Yeah. It, that's, that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me because um, it just shows if, if, if by being enslaved and going through, a, you know, that kind of a history, the first thing you should learn is what not to do by treating others. Yeah. Right? Because you have it by example of what it's like to be treated unfairly based on a, a, a singular thing that's so irrelevant that you're going to turn around quickly and do the same thing. Another thing I noticed about the video was that none of the baby fathers, and I'm assuming there's more than one. I think there's two, and I think they were her husbands. One one was a husband. One was a boyfriend that was like, nah, I'm not with it. Right. And she was like, listen, then let's be... Uh, Friend parent? She, I forget the wording co-parent? that she... Not co-parent, like friends that are co-parent. She used a different phrase. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, he was still like... a white phrase? <laughs> this is the phrase. basement. Right? <laughs> we, can't, we can't go <laughs> on with this guy here. Use... You know what I mean? Why are you picking other white people for? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to keep the conversation relevant. <laughs> so, um... I even lost my favorite part right there. <laughs> That's how racist it was. I'm like I offended think, by the white people. I think for I know what people. you were going with it. I think you were saying like... Uh, where are they? Like they weren't in the first the, and foremost. They they weren't in the though. documentary, right? But I think that was more so because they didn't want to be associated with her. Yeah, I don't think it's a thing of like they're not present in the kids' lives because there's actually a point in the documentary where one of the fathers picks up his son. Right, you see him with a nice white car. He's but, blurred out. No, well, he, you, no, no, you he, watch the show. If you actually watch outside. that documentary, <laughs> unlike being who you are. <laughs> You would have the end. But does he is he blurred out though? Nah, so like he doesn't even come even, out of the car. He just oh. Yeah. And I think it's because he just he doesn't want to be associated with her. And there's also like another part where she was saying like her ex husband even had an issue with her saying that she was black. 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 Yeah. Her her ex husband was like, You're not black. Like, right. Like he had an issue with it as and this is your husband. Like this yeah, isn't well. just like some random dude off the street. Like this is the dude that that Hopefully, when they, when, hopefully when they got married, it was like, yo, this is the person that I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with, and he's like, you're not black, like, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure because like to him it's like, yo, I don't know his story obviously, um, but like, who knows what he went through in being a black person, like. So you're thinking like he probably up. felt offended when she said that. He's like, no, yeah. you don't understand what it is to be yeah, black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as much as she, I. Jennifer's as being black, like as as passionately as she holds to that, like she, she won't understand what it is yeah, to be yeah. black because she's never been black in her life. No, yeah, like, yeah, like she just hasn't. Like I understand that she doesn't want to associate herself with white people because of her parents and her family and the experiences that she had with them. Right. And that sucks to have those experiences. And I actually feel for her. That doesn't mean that like she gets to associate herself with another group of people that she may like their culture and things like that, um, and that gives her like the freedom to do so. Like she, there is so much like that they've had to experience through history that she cannot identify with, and like I think that's why they would have an issue with it. Like that's why they they have it. Like yo, our people were taken from a land like not voluntarily. Terribly, like as Kanye said, like, it wasn't a choice. They didn't leave Africa to come over here to be enslaved for four hundred years, and then when they finally win their freedom, there's they're all 
like when they finally are free, they're they're still enslaved in just other ways, mm-hmm. shapes, and forms, like mentally, like, yeah, yeah, mentally in prison, and like and it's just, it's systemically, like yo, there's still like things set up for them to not succeed the way other races like whites and Asians like. Asians are mad affluent. It's ridiculous. I don't understand. Like this is mad successful. Like I think uh, it's a culture thing. Though. I just That's, think there's so many of them that you know we get lost in the numbers. Who Asians? And I want to. I want to go into that subject. Well, there's not that many Asians. Well, there's, there's a lot of Asians here in the United yeah. States. I want to go into the subject like, of um, of that. But first, I want to ask you about. Um, do you think that she's culturally appropriating the blackness, or do you think like this? Sh- she's harping on their cultures so to no speak. Oh, okay so now give an example this just happened recently somebody wore a, a asian type outfit uh-huh. and they put a picture on instagram or something and everybody's saying that's culture appropriation they're right. saying this is my culture and not your prom dress or something like that and everybody oh, was calling them out right. so you think is that what she's doing with the black i think so you think it's cultural appropriation i, I don't know um i want to say yes yeah. but i guess this is where my um Lack of education comes in where I don't fully understand the word. Culture appropriation. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like, basically, I don't fully understand. Like, I, yeah, listen, I got a ninth grade education. I got my GED when I was seventeen. Hey, yo, shout out. So, That's like, me. Got so my GED at sixteen, really, baby. Um, so <laughs> I'm not like super educated in that sense. So yes, please explain it to me. All right, so and then I think I can. Uh, I would explain to you, and I'm going to give you my thoughts. Cultural appropriation is saying, I give an example. Um. The same thing, okay, with the Asian. Okay, so you're right, saying right, right. I, I'm a, a a black guy, okay, right. and I grew up in New York City, but I like Asian music. I wear their their clothing style. I like to get my hair cut the way they get the haircuts. Okay. I like to speak the way they speak. Uh-huh. I'm just giving you a really, like, totally different communities, but you can see, like, basically saying I'm trying to be like you guys. I want to fit in with you guys. Okay. Okay. Another example would be. Somebody saying, uh, I'm white, but I love hip hop. I got dreadlocks. Eminem. I got. Uh, Eminem does not have dreadlocks. Yeah. No. <laughs> what well, he said, that's the thing. <laughs> I, 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 I grew my hair and I got dreadlocks. Yeah. Um, I like listening to Caribbean music. Right. You know, I like, the, I like the Jamaican culture and I'm really trying to pers- personify that. Right, right, right. Okay. So Jamaicans might say, hey, you're culturally appropriating my culture. You're taking my culture and using it as your own. Now, me personally, mm-hmm. I don't believe in none of that. You don't believe in I don't that. believe in that at all. Because the okay. way I see it is, first of all, we got our culture from some somewhere else. Right. And they got their culture from somewhere else, right? Okay. So look at us. We're New Yorkans, right? We're yeah. a mixture of the island culture and a mixture of the New York culture. Right. New York culture is predominantly hip-hop culture. Right. The island culture is really, you know, Spanish, salsa, all that, right? right. We're a mix of the both. Right. Okay. Um, Are there exceptions though? For culture appropriation? Yeah. Well, look, you were looking at it like this. When we came from the island to New York, uh-huh. once we started this process of becoming New Yorkian, yeah. we people should have called us out then. Right. You guys are culture appropriate. You guys are Spanish. Stick to your bodegas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> don't come over don't come over here to the hood. You know what I'm saying? Right. But nobody said that to us. Right. You know? I think the culture appropriation is a new thing that people are looking at now. Because they're trying to draw lines saying, This is my side, this is your side. Stay off my side. Yeah. I just think it's a product of the uh, the environment that we are now as a as a as a community <clears throat> as a right. you know as a country uh, as a country, country yeah. you know what I'm saying everybody's drawing their lines in the, in the sand like yo this is us like, this is us stay away right and if you cross that line I'm gonna call you out right so do I think she's doing that I think absolutely then if like in yeah. um if I'm thinking about it in terms of of how you just described it then I would say yes like that's what she has done I know that you don't no I mean everybody doesn't think opinion. that's a thing but like like just by definition and by how you explained it like oh yeah that's exactly what she's doing like yeah, she's yeah. like that's exactly it like she, 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 she she's trying to take their culture and make it her. make it her own yeah right. there you go so whether you think it's a thing or not whether you think it's a thing or not um I can see why black people would be fur- are furious with her in that regards. 
white people have been stealing black people forever. Like, so, like been, literally stealing black like, people. Yeah, they were literally stealing <laughs> black people and like literally stealing. And like, here comes Rachel Dolezal. She's like, yo, it doesn't, like, when does it stop? When, yeah. did, when do they stop taking what's ours? Like, yo, she came out and she like took our culture. She took our position and the end double AC. Like, she's literally taking like what's reserved for us. Like, like, so like, I think when she does it, like it just brings up history, and they just like can't, like they can't remove her from the history of white people taking everything from them. So my answer to that question would be no. Your answer? Wait, what do you mean? No. Like so, so, um, so you don't think that she's culture? Appropriating, as he says. No, because what what was said very what, what was said very um, what stood out to me in the explanation of um, this term is that she took something that was ours. The fact is that she took something that she she took something she took the only thing that she had. She had she had being raised by these. White parents. Mm -hmm. And it was such a negative thing. Like Noelle was saying before that the only outlet she had was her siblings mm -hmm. who were black. And so she associated with so them. So she associated right. with them. So right. this is not to me um, appropriation. This is this is all I knew. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of like a culture thing, it feels like. But, it, it, but right. It's like us. It's like a white person growing up in the projects. Now, me personally, if I grew up with a white person in the projects, I use the N-word. The black guy's in the neighborhood use the N-word. The white guy grew up with us. He used the N-word. Nobody has a problem with it. Right. And it's not until just recently where people are trying to call out white people. And he's like, yo, I grew up in this. I mean, I don't... This is the way I talk. This is, right, right. Instead of saying guy, or yo, this guy did this, this guy did this, he'd be like, oh, this nigga ran over there, blah, blah, blah. Like, right. that's just the way we talk. Right, but... Can I say something? No, so, yeah, yeah. so here's something that I learned. That's also a very New York thing. Like that's also a very <laughs> that mentality, New York thing. right? Like yeah. So like it's very much like I don't want to just say New York, but like New York, like an urban Philly, like Northeast thing, where like if you come up in the hood, you have license to say nigga, yeah, yeah. right? I got a friend who's who's from Sunset Park. He moved, um, I think it was like Kansas or you know, somewhere Midwest, down south, and he was in the black neighborhood. He said, nigga, because that's how he talked, and they pressed him on it. What? They prepped, and that's and he was like, he learned then that like, yo, this is a New York thing. Yeah. Like New York really is its own world. <laughs> like, yo, sure, yeah. like, yo, like, like, we really are our own world. Like, yo, the way things happen up here, the way we talk, the way we rock with each other, especially within the hood, like, it's a world inside of a world. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Know. Like, so, like, we Literally, think it's okay. We, we don't have to leave the hood for anything. We got we don't. We got supermarkets, a laundry. Yeah, we we got have no reason to even walk out the neighborhood. Yeah, none at all. Like, yo, and it's. Especially now with the internet, like I don't ever gotta leave to cop sneakers, to cop clothes, or nothing, yeah, man. Yeah. I can just well, go online yeah, sure. and just cop whatever I need, and then like I leave the crib and I got everything in my hood that I need is like right there. So like, this is our world, like. But so we think it's okay for like Hispanic and white people who come up in this hood to like talk, just even how, Asian people. Right, but like I know we some think hood Asian okay people that talk like that. Like we like nothing about talk. It. However, but if we leave New York and we go down south, we go to Atlanta, we go to Alabama, we go to Mississippi, where they, where it's like so racially charged and there's a long history yeah, of right, like right. white people calling black people nigga, nigga, like and then killing them, and then we come out and we say it, and we don't know any better, then they're, they're gonna have an issue with it because it's tied like to yeah. something that's super hateful. Like, you know what I mean? Even though they may say it amongst themselves, like the black people in the South may say it amongst themselves, like, they're the only ones that are allowed. To, like, they really are the only ones that are yeah. allowed to say it. Like, yeah, because I remember when I went to Texas, I said it 
and nobody called me out on it. But, but the they first time like, I ever said it, yeah. heads turned like, what is going on over there? And I'm talking to somebody that's from Sunset that moved to Texas. Right. So the we we just in. We're in the, we were in a, a Whataburger. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's, it's, oh, it's sort of like place. a McDonald's. So we're talking I whatever, and it's, yeah. you know, when you when you when you when you have a conversation with somebody from the hood, you're you're tuned into something different. Yes. Like it's like a totally different vibe when you talk to them compared to if you talk to somebody that's not from them. So once we started talking, it was like we're in the it was like we're in the hood. Yeah. And then we're talking, going back and forth, and. As we're talking, I'm looking around and you see people turning their head like, what are they? Oh, I can't believe they're saying that. It's unbelievable. Mind you, we're both light-skinned Puerto Ricans right. saying this, you know? Right, right. And um, it's so funny. Later on, one of the black dudes that work um, behind the counter was like, yo, y'all from New York? Mm -hmm. We were like, yeah. And he was from New York. So and he, he was, was like, yo, what up? Yo. He was hype. <laughs> yeah, he was hype, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what they think about it. Like, oh, man. Yeah. He probably heard y'all and was like, yeah, they from New York. Yeah, they got to be from New York. <laughs> yeah, 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 they got to yeah. be from New York. But, like, his homies that are not from New York, like, had they, he not been there, they might have, like... Said, said something like, yo, you guys can't talk like that yeah. or something. Or, like... Or his boys must have been like, when you showed up, he must have been like, this is a side of David we didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, so, speaking of that, now... We had kind of had this conversation before, but I just want to go into it again. The rest of the country says you got to be, if you're black, you can say the N word. Right. What if you're half black? I mean, yeah. You're right? still black, bro. Okay, so you got J. Cole, half black, half white. Right. No problem. You got Drake, half black, half Jewish, I think. Yeah. No problem. You ever heard of Logic, the rapper? Yes, I've heard of Logic. He's light skin. He's, light He's skin. half black, half white, though. Okay. But people give him crap. Now he's half black. He's Can just as half black. Yeah. I didn't know he was half black. Oh no, you didn't know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't his, know he his was father's half black. black yeah. So now. But like There's a documentary on Netflix that I forgot what it's called. Hip hop rap something. Rapture. 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 Yeah, 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 Rapture. Which I've heard a lot about. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. I should watch it. The logic one, I maybe like his music, yo, I swear. Really, yeah. really. I, I never even heard of him before, bro. Yeah. I, mean, I, I had logic. heard about him, but like <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know anything about Logic. Like I didn't know like he was half black. I thought he was just a, a white dude, like just yeah, a yeah. straight up white dude. Um, yeah. Maybe I think if people give him crap, it's because of that. I think there's a lot of people like myself who probably didn't know. Yeah, yeah. The, that, but the, I think that. But I think that's also because like Logic, from what I do know about him, he's had like a pretty positive. Message in hip hop, yeah, like, yeah. Since he's like stepped onto the scene, so well, I think maybe people might think it's like counterintuitive. You know what to, it is, like, though. Have he that, that kind of message, and then like just like switch up and like start using phrases and words yeah. that people feel are negative, and they're like, "Yo, that's not who you. That's not who you are. Like yeah. you never came out on the scene talking like this. Like if anything, you've spoken against it." Why, like, well, Logic had a troubled past too. His mom abused him, his father okay. wasn't there. Later on in life, he connected with his father again. Nice, nice. He had the Rachel Dolezal experience yeah, the Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> where he was abused by his we mom. Obviously stuff, have a, you know? We obviously have a we obviously have a Logic fan here, but I wonder if it's a, a, a perception thing where it's like you look black, so it's okay. But he kind of looks like he was uh, he I mean, half white, half black, but he kind of looks like uh. <laughs> Put up a picture of him, but he kind of looks like he could be Mark Anthony's son. That's mad funny. Yeah, yeah. He kind, you know, he looks. It, it, he also. He kind of looks white. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you could, he could pass as a white boy. You know, and I think if I think that's what it is, is people just don't want to see that word coming out of that mouth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean that could be it. Like that could absolutely be it. I mean, I and we had talked about the N word before, but just right the difference between nigger and nigga. And not only that, like yo, so I feel got, like he really likes to say he just have trying with to find the hard reason. R. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to find a reason to say it. <laughs> so we have in New York City. There's, I mean, there's the, the beautiful thing about New York is that we have different cultures in different parts of the city. Right. You got your Queens people that are like we all joke about it. Oh, you from Queens? Ah, we already know what you like. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Or you from Staten Island? We already know what you like. Right, right. But then you got people from Washington Heights, and Washington Heights. What kind of people from Washington Heights? 
Dominicans. Exactly. See how he's that was? <laughs> so now I don't even have to. I used to live up there. So I oh, so you already know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you know. I already know what it is. So yeah. Dominicans have a word, and they, it's called money, right? Mm-hmm. They say, oh, que, que lo que money, right? Like, what's up, money? Yeah. Money is just short for my nigga. Right. Because they're by, you know, um, Harlem. So right. that's a that's just something in the culture that was a mix that happened there. Now, do, some Dominicans use the word and don't even think about nigga this, nigga that. They don't even come into the thought. Right. They just know that's what you call your boy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that's a hood thing because Washington Heights is the hood. Washington Heights is definitely the hood. Know, that's definitely no the hood. Part of I mean, like, you got, like, a little bit of Washington Heights that may not be the hood, but that's, like, all the way uptown. But, like, the... Sunny Park side up there, like, oh, it's morning side. Right? Yeah. Nah, it is hood out there. Well, I went. Well, I think it was when when in, when you guys. It feels good at, being over there, though. The church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bro, remember all the way up there. I remember going up there. I was like, yeah, it's definitely the hood. Yo, son, it feels good <laughs> being up there, though. No, I yeah. love being. In the I hood. love Wash Heights, man. Like yo, even though I'm Puerto Rican and you know it's a Dominican neighborhood, like I still felt like I was amongst my people. People. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like yo, there's just something around being like like. There's just something with being around other Latinos that's yeah. like, it doesn't matter if you're Puerto Rican, Dominican. It's like, Mexican. it's like, close like, enough Yeah, that like, you feel comfortable. Like, yeah, yeah. yo, this is my family. Yeah, like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, I love I that wonder if family. that's what Rachel felt while she was growing up. But, <laughs> but, like, nah. but yo, it's not close at all. <laughs> she moves to the hood, she's like, ah, I'm home. Ah, and they're looking at her grades. like, ah, oh, man, she's come to sell all the property here. <laughs> all right, so bot- bottom line, so hold on, so we were, we were talking about, um, um, I, I had wrote down, is being black just a color thing or is it identity culture? I think it's all those things. I think it might be a mix, yeah. Yeah. Because look, I think it's just one thing. Because like I think we talked about this before too, but black culture to me mm-hmm. is not hood culture. No, it's not. hood culture is a separate thing. Hood culture right? is its own thing. Yeah, yes. but one may argue, one may argue that hood is a direct effect from that historical, you know, um, um, racism. The history. Yeah, yeah. I so see I see you're just trying to separate them. One may say, no, the hood came from this 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 history of being, you know, um oppressed, um, yeah, yeah. enslaved, treated as an animal. So no, you can't separate them. One is a derivative of the other, just like nigger is a derivative of nigger. No, it's <laughs> no, it's all the way around. Oh right, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's my dyslexia. <laughs> ah, <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? I don't think you could separate it because they would you can, say though. the ghetto no, came from. This is what I think. I think the the, the hood culture gr- was birthed by the people that were there. The people that were there were black, predominantly black, because you know there was a lot You're of. You're saying the hood culture. The hood culture. Yeah. The hood culture. So the influences, especially from the beginning, was from black, Hispanic, and whatever else was here. Whoever even, like, was in that hood. Even like Irish people. Yeah, yeah. Like when Irish people came over here, like. It was in the hood. Like, Farragut projects used to be Irish people, bro. And I, you know what's funny? I heard I heard that about the hillbilly culture. Mm-hmm. That they had a lot to do molding the hood culture. Well, because they were all poor. Yeah, poor, yeah. And, the way they talk, the like, slang, the all that. The yeah. culture is people who are, like, in poverty. Like, so, which is why, like, which is why, and I think this is it. I think this is why you can have... Asians, whites, Hispanics, and black in the hood in New York City, and they all talk with the same language and lingo because we're all oppressed and we're all in poverty. And at this point, it doesn't really matter. Yo, Monica, we just gotta eat. We gotta yeah, survive. Yeah, we're, 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 like yo, like yo, the motto here is just like yo, survive. Like yo, regardless of whatever. Like I got food, you don't got food, and you don't got money, but I got the money. Mm. I'm looking out for you. Like, we gonna I want to make sure that you eat. If I eat, you eat. Like it's just a mentality. Yeah, of, it's, like, it's not like oh, you're white and I'm black. It's nah. like yo, I live on the 13th floor. You live on the 15th floor. We both know what it's like. We both got roaches. Exactly. Like, yeah. and it's like <laughs> I'm gonna help you out. The same. Like yo, that's why. Like yo, people can say whatever they want about hood culture, people and poverty, but like if there's any people that 
know how to really have a tight community is people in poverty. Yeah, like who looks out for people more than people in poverty? Like, yo, we all look out for each other. Like, I remember as a kid, like if we didn't have sugar or milk or something, my moms would be like, yo, go to Shannon's house, ask her for sugar. This is, and Shannon would hook us up. Yeah. Like she would be like, here's some sugar, here's some milk. Tell your moms whatever she. Yeah, needs. but I think in the same way, yeah, the the, like the privilege and 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 the wealthy. Do not look out for each other like that, bro. Yo, I was just watching something. I think I think it was uh, Ben Shapiro, and I put too too many thoughts in this big ass head of mine. Um, nothing nothing sticks. Nothing but substantial. Nothing <laughs> substantial. Nothing relevant. Right. Screw you, bro. <laughs> so. Um, uh, they were, they were. He was covering like a PTA meeting or a board meeting in a in a, an established wealthy community, mm-hmm. and the parents oh, were it. being, you know, they were being. Was this the, on the Upper West Side? I don't remember. I don't even remember. I think, I think it was. So they know, were like wilding out, sorry, like, I'm no, sorry. we don't want these children. <laughs> sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want these. We can feel your anger. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah I mean, it was. <laughs> no, I'm just, so, no, so, so, so in that article, you could see that the the you know the 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 community, the wealthy community, they were sticking together because they didn't want these poor kids in this room. That's who it was because they stuck to they stuck together. together. To keep people oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you know, like, 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 but at least they stuck rise. together, right? They, they stuck right. together, but they stuck together in a different sense. Like their their thing is like, yo, these people are coming into our world now that could like have an effect on our our wealth or our affluence or our influence or our, like so they like, we got to do whatever we can yeah. so like, and it's funny because those like, people yo. fought for the the way for them to make it out and get to where they are right. like let's say you have this really good school mm-hmm. let's fight for you know we have more diversity in the school as right. soon as the diversity comes they're like I don't want my kid in that school right because the school's going to be ghetto now because, well that and because they didn't think that Having a school become more diverse means their kid may not get selected. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we're going to create, I don't know what it was, but like, let's just say for the sake of the topic, like we're going to let in a hundred kids who probably would not be allowed in. Um, so now they have the same opportunity as others. Yeah. One of the parents was actually like, yo, this is unfair. Like, I spent like $5,000 or whatever it was to, like, have my, to have my child tutored. And now you're telling them that, like, they may not be able to have this education after they put in all this time and effort. And there was a principal that was like, yo, like... Like I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, like, yo, I can't believe like I can't like yo, this is insulting. Like, first of all, like you the fact that you have five thousand dollars to invest in tutoring for your child just shows the privilege yeah, that, that, that you have. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yo, these kids would love to have five hundred dollars. Like yeah. not even five thousand, just actually five hundred dollars, not even for tutoring, just for the basic needs of life. Like you the, know what I mean? The like, iron the irony and what I got from it was that wow, what what uh, narrow-minded these individuals who are privileged are. Don't they realize that their child has to face the real world and the real world is majority poverty? You know, don't they realize that eventually your child has to integrate with the rest of society and what not better way to explain at a young age like at a young age why are these kids coming into our school that don't have a computer? They never saw a computer, mom. Well, this is why. And this is why we right. have to be thankful. We have to continue striving so we continue providing and prospering and taking over the world. Mommy, what are Jordans? What are Jordans? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's hilarious. What are Jordans? Um, <laughs> so, back to this. Being that we're, we're on the topic of children, yeah. when you watch the, the, the documentary, it's very well, very well put together. When before I, I shout I, out to I, Netflix, I didn't know much about checks. Rachel, but when she was calling her child, I was like, "He better be black." 
this story is not going to go well if the kid is not black. <laughs> That's the first thing that jumped in my mind, That's right? It's funny. racist, it's funny, whatever you want to call it. But I was like, and he was black. But then you see the child, he's trying to wake up. And then she's like, oh, you want a hug? And you could see that there's still some innocence instilled in this child. I think he, I don't think when he was 13 starts. when it starts. Yeah, when but the kid grows real yeah, quickly. He does. You see that the puberty phase during the documentary? No, you see no, no, a maturity like his, based on what he's oh, watching. Mentality and like how it, how he evolves as the documentary goes on. Damn. It's like he becomes fed up so, with, with her. Well, like, here's here's the thing. Yeah. Here, I want to I want to pause right there and go back to the barber shop. Can you imagine the conversation from that barber who was yelling that you don't see? Can you imagine the conversation that barber must have had with that kid? Your mom's a liar. She's a white lying. Person who maybe maybe it's not even him. Maybe it's going maybe, on behind his maybe back. Maybe he's just the barbers. conversation. Right, 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 right. So oh, that's kid. that white chick that thinks she's black. We right. get a haircut and like he's that. like, "That's my mom who hugs me in the morning, who feeds yeah. me and protects me." Later on, I'm so, I'm I'm also shocked. Side note that <laughs> there were more comments of her breastfeeding her newborn child. I'm like, oh my gosh, can you imagine how pissed off the KK must be right now? Give him that white milk. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, but this is the, this is what I'm noticing in the documentary. She's a dope artist, dope artist. She her skills on her drawing, games off the chain. Her her, Yo, her skills on her <laughs> art is ridiculous. It's very it's also ridiculous. culture appropriated. It is. Oh yeah, because it's yeah. Of, uh, Afro. It's so all. It's very well, but then it's again, that was her education background. But that's what so she that's knew, what which makes sense, right? Right. Like, you so write like, what you know of. You, right. you speak what you know of. I, I'm not going to talk about how it is to be Asian. Nah, but she, but I'm pretty sure she wanted to. She could have painted some landscapes a month. Uh, <laughs> 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 All the fruit. <laughs> it's 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 the irony that towards the end, spoiler alert. I don't know if everybody mentioned that, but towards the end of the documentary, her kids don't want anything to do with her. Which I feel oh, bad sucks. for her. You wouldn't know this part because you didn't finish it. Yeah, that's sad. But when you finish it, you'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna forget about this conversation. No, nah, but like, but like, it was so sad, like. I really feel for her kids, though. Yeah. Because her oldest son, um, he wants to go to Howard. And, like, yo, people are commenting like crazy. Like, I would take his application and toss it in the trash. And it's like, yo, why would you do that to him? Like, he's black, one. Like, like two, like, he's not his mom. Like, his mom and, like... His mom is his mom, and he, like he's he his didn't own have person. a choice in the right, womb. Like he, didn't a, he didn't have a choice, choice in that life. Right, right. Not, like, none of us do. Exactly. So it's like, why would you punish him for the sins of his mother? Like, you know what I mean? Like that. Yo, we had this like conversation. That, that's why <sighs> punishing people for children for the sins of their parents. And, and yeah. when do we, as a society, finally realize that by putting someone down? Instead of discussing the differences to educate ourselves, when will we realize as a society that by putting one down leads to an, a trickle effect to that person's immediate family that eventually affects the community as a whole? Yeah. When the do we culture, stop criti yeah. criticizing and actually sit down and start like, okay, I'm going to put all my emotions aside because we are all full of emotions. That's how we operate. That's how we communicate. It's emotions that bring us together. It's emotion that divides us. But when can we sit down, put emotion to the side and listen to the other side, even if we're going to walk out of there like, nah, 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 this person's racist or whatever opinion we may have had right. going into the conversation. I don't think that's what's happening. I think this organization didn't give her a, sh a shot, a fair shot as to... Um, going in a little deeper and discussing, you know, why are you doing this? What's your motive? What's your end game? You know, um, at the same time, you watch a documentary and you can't help but feel that she loves the limelight. And yeah, I, when you say that, please don't also say that that's not you, because that's that's you. We all love the limelight. I don't know. We got some introverts out there. I don't like that. <laughs> some people introverts are like yeah, yeah like, just like, like, like that's how I feel right now like when he said that I'm like bro like, it might not be in the form of speaking and, and being in front of someone but you got so many different avenues of expressing yourselves that you right. that you might as an introvert you might you still have an avenue and at the end of the like day we all want to be heard is number one and whatever NBA yeah. jam Wait, <laughs> I'm the dude. number one NBA jam player <laughs> it's my name baby that's me I got I the record Everybody likes the limelight. What I will say is that I think everybody wants to be heard. 
and everybody wants to be validated. Right. So maybe it's not the lime. Right. Maybe it's not the limelight, but at the end of the day, we all want to be heard. Heard. Right. But like to me, I felt like when I watched it, and even now, like talking about it with y'all, have to having other combos about it. I feel like. And this makes sense. I feel like she's a con artist in a sense. I feel like she knows what she's doing. Like she's smart, bro. Like she's very, very smart. Like she's not stupid. Um, she knows that she got to eat. She got kids. She got to pay her bills. Like, and I feel like she knows. Like, all right. Like, whether she wants to admit it or not. Like, she knew what she was doing from the start. Like, from writing those hate mail. Like, I think she wrote. Her own hate mail. I'll be honest with you. Like I think she wrote. We're all getting that down stuff. to the, the the real questions here, right? Like <laughs> like like at the end of the day, like I feel for her in the sense where like um, I feel for her in the sense of like how she was being attacked. I don't think she deserved to be attacked like that. You can be upset with her and how she approached everything, like and and like everybody can have their own f- feelings and opinions on that stuff, but like. To attack someone to the point where they can't take their kids to go get a haircut and they can't wait out in front for her son to come out, I thought that was a little messed up. To like attack someone to the point where like her kid who really wants to go to Howard can't go to Howard because of like her, like I feel that's messed up. Um, but like if you want to talk about like everything else, like feeling like she's a appropriating the culture. Yeah. She's taking advantage of all this stuff because of her privilege. Like, I think she know. Like, I think, like, like, yo, on that stuff, like, yo, like, yeah, she could be called out on that stuff. Like, I, I think she knows what she's doing in that yeah. sense. I really you, do. You think she sees this like, this is, you get, you get 15 minutes. This is the one I was given. I'm going to write it regardless what it is. Yes. What it, yeah. Well, her fifteen minute came and went, and now and she's now trying she to go. Extra, come she's back. trying to pop up those extra another extra fifteen. Fifteen half hours. <laughs> she got another half hour out of this. <laughs> like you know, that's what, what Kanye's like, doing. Yeah. I gotta that's get those exactly back what. That's exactly what Kanye's Yo, he's doing. He's a. I don't even know. Like son, like. That's another that's topic. A whole, hold on, that's, that's another hold on. hour, man. No, which, that's a, that's which, another. If y'all want to talk about it, we can talk about it because I got a lot of thoughts <laughs> and feelings on Kanye. So, so, I've been a Kanye fan forever, but I'm just saying. So if y'all want to, talk yeah, we about that, we yeah. do need to do a, a Kanye follow up because we started one, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I it's it's gonna it's actually I gonna be airing. Did see the clip that y'all uh, posted with his interview with Charlemagne? Yeah, yeah. It was like a one minute yeah. clip or something. Like I thought, like. He has some valid points and like some like let me phrase that. He has a touch of valid points. I don't I don't really agree with him. I can't almost. stand him. Yo, I, I think he's wild. I found a like, new fall in love. After this. Huh? After this that happened, I found a new fall in love. Oh. You found a new fall in love? Oh, come on, Noah. Oh. I, I, you know what it is? I like I like his uh, that he's not afraid to express himself. Which is fine. Yeah, yeah. But he's never been afraid to. He's he's Kanye. He's I, always yeah. expressed himself. How is that a, a revelation now, now to you? No, but I'm just saying like he's going... Okay, saying George Bush doesn't... Because that's what we're talking about. George, saying George Bush doesn't George care about black, black people. people yeah. That was already in the ether. People already felt like that. So there's nothing new. Right. Um, Beyonce should have won that Grammy or whatever. Everybody <laughs> felt like that. Yeah. Now saying... George uh, George Bush was this? Trump. Saying Trump's my boy. Mm-hmm. No, but that's going against the grain. To me, that shows a different level of... It's going against the grain for most minorities. I wouldn't say it's going against the grain, period. Because at the end of the day, this is a white man's world. And this is a white country where white people reign and white people rule. And it's like... This is why I think most black and Hispanic people are like, yo, he's like submitting... To the white man, in a sense, because he knows who's really in power. Like, um, uh, am I there? I don't know if I'm there. I just think he's off his rocker. I've, which I felt like he's been like he's he's had some like. I'm not gonna attribute this to his mental health issues because mental health is a a wide topic in and of itself. That doesn't mean someone's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah, no. that, that's not what it means. Right. Um, 
I'm not going to say that, which some people have said, and I feel like that's like kind of hurtful to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if anything, you're putting people with depression or anxiety. Anxiety and yeah, stuff yeah, like exactly. that. Like, yeah, you, know, you don't know not, enough to just label it one thing. Right. Like mental health is, that's a wide, wide yeah. topic in and of itself. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just think like Kanye's like, he's always been a smart dude. He's always been a genius. He's always been out there. Like, um, like I, I, I can't formulate my If there's one thing I can say about Kanye moment, is that he's a very nuanced thinker. He's uh-huh. just not a very good way, uh, not a good expressor of that. Right. I think he thinks very deeply about things. I just my think he has a hard time. said the same thing. Huh? I said, my homie said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. He was like, yo, I think Kanye only knows how to express himself in music. Yeah, I can see like, that. He yeah. doesn't know how to express himself in like regular conversation. Like, so I think the opposite. I you know what I think it is? I think he needs to actually sit down and write down his thoughts. What he then, does with his music. Like, like right. you know when you're writing a report, you go back, you delete something. Like, I said that wrong. Right, right. It, I think he's like that with a conversation. I think he just blurts out everything. And, and then he what, goes back and it's like, ah, Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but if he wrote it down, he could go back and delete and edit and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I think that's why he can express through his music. Yeah. I just think he just, he doesn't have a filter. So he's just blurting things out. I think he's thinking through the process as he's saying it too, you know? You think that Trump was sitting there saying in the one in the Oval Office saying, See, I told you. I'm not racist. I, I got think, a black fan. Uh, what do you think? I got uh, a black fan, Kanye West. Trump, Trump is like I got the one black friend. The That's one all I needed. like I finally That got was it. on your side. That he was must on have had a raging heart on what sitting in the office reading the tweets like, Oh yes. yes. Holding the freaking phone in the air. <laughs> Um, get Condoleezza Rice on the phone right now. I wanna. I need like four Twinkies just to put it down. <laughs> um, uh, back to uh, b- yes. back to the documentary though. Um, just a few key points. And Noel, I couldn't ask you the question of the ending because uh, you didn't watch it. <laughs> but I think that um, I think that yeah, it's very very plausible that she wrote those letters herself. It's it's not it's it's a no brainer. Right. But at the same time. To see wh- whatever her stance is, it's clear that she had a or has a passion for um, the black community. I think so too. Yeah. So that's I think that goes without without a doubt. And I think that the we're, we're such at a fragile state in regards to cultural identity, race. Um, that I think that it I think that it it would be a loss to the black community to shut her down. Yeah, I think so. Too. I think that it would be actually a lot, a, a great benefit I don't think to incorporate her back into it. So how would they? Like be- how? Because like- one of the girls was saying, one of the persons on, I think it was, oh, where where she went to the college? Yes. And yes. one of the audience, one of the students had said, don't, don't quote me, but what she was trying to say was that you had the right intentions, yeah, like but your method was, was incorrect. Wrong. And I think that it would be in the benefit of the black community to say, here's a white person. But that's, that's the problem, though. She won't identify herself as white. But that's, she, that's she the, did on the real. No, she said that she was born white. Born white, white yeah, right. She, that she doesn't identify. You're right. Yeah. Right. right. So, and, and that's where the hang-up is. Like, I don't, think, I don't think that the black community wanted to do away with her fully. I think they would actually be accepting of her if she owned it. If she just like owned her mistakes and just wanted to be like, you know what? I do want to be black. You think I just didn't that I'm a white woman, I, 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 but like I love black people. I love black culture. I love like helping y'all fight and I like empowering you. Like if she just owned everything, like I think there would still be like some time in like having to heal from that. But I do think that they would be willing to because she was making moves for the So okay, that, so if she owned it, would she be relevant? If she owned it, would she be relevant? Probably not. I don't know. I don't know. And I, really I don't know. know. So I, even if she puts on the whitest outfit, the whitest hairdo, I mean, owns it, she might as well erase herself, no? That would be so good if she does though. That would be the news of the century. This, she just dressed completely in a like Hillary Clinton outfit, <laughs> <laughs> just blowing. Uh, what is it? Straightens her hair. <laughs> right. This guy. This guy used to read the tabloids like nonstop back in the nineties. Would pick it up and just. So say, uh, I, I'm not in so entrenched with white white culture, but I don't think that they hate her. The KKK do. Well, but that's like deep. You know that what I'm just saying? Milk? White culture in general. That's like 
super extreme on that yeah, side, yeah. right? Yeah. But I do see that black culture, regardless of who would I speak to, almost unanimously say, "Yeah, she's wrong. She's bad. She's right. horrible." But white people are just like, eh, "Who cares?" Follow up question: We're talking about uh, races and cultures. Um, what should be the the Christians, uh, if we're asked, what should be the Christians' take on this situation? Oh, man. Um, I think the Christian take should be for her to admit her faults, one, right? Is that what you're, like, asking? Like, or, like, <laughs> her specifically? Or, like, where should we stand on, like, race? Like, I'm... Yeah, I guess both. Uh, so I guess both. So where, as a as a an entity, Christian entity, right, uh, whatever you want to label that as, um, where sh- what is uh, the Christian stance on this issue regarding uh, Rachel and what had happened, uh, and then more specifically in an in individual case for her, uh, what what would the Christian say yeah, to I the situation? Think it, it, Oh, sorry, sorry, I keep on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he man. loves to hear your voice. That's what it is. Yeah. What <laughs> um, I would say the Christian stance should be to love her and forgive her, regardless of her of her faults. Like, mm-hmm. um, we shouldn't hate her, obviously, because we all have our sins and things that we struggled with, things that we that we. Sh- We've all committed sins that we know we shouldn't have committed <laughs> at, right. at some point or time in our life. So there should be a posture of grace and mercy towards her. Um, that doesn't mean we don't hold her accountable for what has happened. Um, there has to be that level of like honesty and like repentance. Because if there's no accountability there, there's no need for her to repent. Like, okay, I'm forgiven, I'm loved. But we have of what? Like, what are you being forgiven of? What are you like? Yeah, like, yeah. like yeah, you, you have can't. Have, you, you can't admit have, to your faults. Yeah, you can't right. have one without the other. Right. Like so to I truly see, grow. Right. So she has to like own like what she did. Like whether it's like, you know, whether she did it inadvertently, if she did it intentionally, then she needs to own that. And like yeah. she needs to like come out and say like I intentionally like did this. I intent like. Like and I apologize. I repent. I ask for forgiveness, and it has to be like a restoration process, mm-hmm. like on our end and on her end as well. Like I, I also feel like that with a lot of things. I feel like whatever local church is in the area that whatever issue happened, let's say Rachel Zolo's offer for instance, mm-hmm. whatever local church is in the area, should reach out to her. Be like, hey, look, everybody's shunning you. We're not going to shun you. Yes, you know what I'm saying. I actually we'll invite you into a community. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. You think you're black? That's, who cares? Just right. come on. I feel the same way about all types of like even homosexuality. Yeah. Whatever. Come to our church. We'll hang out. We'll talk. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? All like, right. I I just feel like, especially the the black community mm-hmm. in the neighborhood. I judging by where sh- it's taking place, I'm guessing a lot of them are Christians, quote unquote. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. They should be more open armed about it. Right. So I, say yeah, sure. You think you're black? Well, I I think I'm not a sinner. So why don't you come join me? I think you know? I think <laughs> to 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 jump or tag off of what you both were saying. I think that the Christian's perspective should be to bring both parties together, whether there is repentance or not on her side. Whether there is acknowledgement of her faults, if there is, if she is guilty of, of lying and falsifying all these things, I think that the Christian's perspective could be or should be, listen, this doesn't change the issue at hand. Whether she acknowledges that she's white or black, she's part of this cause that we are. And I think that we're, we're intentionally being drawn away from the true issue at heart. And I think that we need to discuss on that. Which is, and, wait, wait, so what would you say is the true issue at heart? Racism. Okay. I think it goes so further back, point. too. It goes, it, there's I a lot. I think it goes it, to her, her childhood. But I'm not just talking about her. I'm saying, listen, she's, this is who she is. She's identifying as this. She's mm-hmm. going to stand for it. It doesn't change that there's still, you know, this association. There's still this cause of bringing awareness mm-hmm. of standing together. So if she's not gonna admit to it. Maybe she didn't 
falsify or, or come up with this. Maybe she didn't lie. That's not for us. That's for, between her and her faith, her creator. We as Christians should be saying, let's come together and let's not be divided. Let's accept that this is who she is and move on. And we're here. For, we, we were here for a cause, right? Yeah. To stand up for Black Lives Matter, stand up for whatever the, the, the mission was. Let's stay true to that mission and acknowledge that, you know what? She's an individual. She has rights. She, if she wants to, you know, identify as this person, despite my my personal feelings, we as a whole have an obligation to continue educating and 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 informing our our yeah. our agenda. So you're saying instead of shunning her, they should use her. I mean, at this point, it's it's at a loss, and it's 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 such a it's such a misdirection to the cause. If they have one, if they have a clear cause of of standing up and 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 you know speaking for their rights. Then it, this is such a distraction from that. Um, I can't entirely agree with that. This is what I don't. This is where I wouldn't agree. Yeah, yeah you're gonna have to reset that joint. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, it's tough for me to say that. Like, sh- that. Let me take a step back. As a Christian, if if I came face to face with her, it would be tough for me to say, you could identify as black. You don't have to. Like, that's just who you are, that's just who you are. Not that not that not because, that you, wait, wait, ahead. one second. Because because it's like if we're fighting for this cause, like and I think I'll use the example of Jesus. If he wasn't who he said he was but he still claimed to be that, but he wasn't who he said he was, then, like, how serious do you take him? He's just a liar. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like if Jesus isn't the son of God, but is claiming to be the son of God, how far will that further, like, how much will that further the mission and how serious do you take him? So with Rachel Dolezal, she's a white woman, um, Who's identifying as black? If we don't, if we don't clear that up first, she wants to fight for the rights of black people. Praise God! Like we can use you in that fight. Um, we can use your your platform. We can use your intellect. We can use your methods. Like because you're smart. Like you know what you're doing. Like we can use those things in furthering this cause. Um, however, like. You continuing to identify as a black person is upsetting these people here within the church because they feel like because you're not that like like it's okay to have the same mission to be yeah it's okay to have the same vision to be on the same mission however to Pick something to, and to be something that you're, or to, to, I, I to see, pretend to be something that you're I, not. I see what you're I feel saying. Like it can hurt the cause. Yeah. Like, you know I, what I, mean? I, like, I can see, I see what you're saying. But what I would say to those people who are hurt, get over it. Let's stick to the mission at hand. Get right. over it. Stop giving the, stop giving her the attention that the media and everyone else wants to give her. But she's gonna get that attention regardless. Right, but we don't she have to feed like, into it. We don't have to feed them to it. I'm talking about the, the black world culture. Will see her more than they see. Everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So like, she's, she's distracted. Like she right. She's a distraction. So it's kind of like, um, all right, uh, I'm a real big sp- sp- sports person. Um, when people talk about distractions on a team, like, they, like I would say the, the first person that comes to my mind would be Terrell Owens. He was a monster wide receiver. Animal, bro. Like football. Yeah, in in football. Shut up, no one. Terrell Owens. You was, didn't know either. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, 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 he was a savage, but like whatever team he went to, no matter how good the team was, he was the focus point. And they all worked towards the same vision of let's win a Super Bowl. So let's my- win a t- title. So but because he was such a distraction, and it didn't matter who was around him. He was the guy that everybody focused on. I feel like that would be the same cause. Where so they Rachel, utilized him. They utilized him to make. Well, they always th- lost. He never won a Super Bowl. <laughs> he never won a Super Bowl. He retired without winning a Super Bowl. Every team he went to, the the team that came closest to winning a Super Bowl <coughs> still wanted up losing. Damn. When he was on the Eagles, but like that was it. So like 
yeah, they utilized his talents, and like he was helpful to an extent on the field. But at the end of the day, he was still the he was still the person that the media went to. So Rachel Dolezal is would be the Terrell Owens. Like she would be the person. Like she can further the cause to an extent. However, she will inadvertently be the face of the cause, whether the black. See, but I I feel like. It's like, look. So you're saying she's a distraction. What he's she's saying is she's a tool. She's a tool. Yeah. So I'm saying she could be a tool to an extent, but at the end of the day, she would be a distraction more than she would be. See, a I'm tool. saying. So she's, you're saying, wait, let me just let me just try to merge these two together. Yeah. So if she's gonna remain with the same thoughts or whatever, she should play a background character. She should never show her face. Okay. If she, if she doesn't so she could work. To, she could work for the cause. Right. Just stay in the background. Right. But even in working in the background, yo. Counseling, like all of this stuff, like because custodian, like, not, not even like, 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 no, no, no. custodian. Go say sweep the back. Counseling, like she needs to get counseling. Oh, <laughs> like, I see. Like, right. like, like, like she needs to be sitting down with leaders and pastors and counselors in the church to like help her see where her error is. Because I would think that like. Yo, as much as a tool she could be, like, yeah, she would still be a distraction. Like, she would never utilize her full potential until she gets over that hump of, like, her not wanting to admit that she's white. Okay, so like, I'm going to jump like, in. I'm going to jump in here and, and uh, go back to the point that she's a tool. However screwed up she may be in the head. Mm-hmm. She's a tool because I would argue, and I know, I know I'm going to hear it. By saying this, and I saw your face, your little look right there, like, go ahead. Um, she she grew up um, seeing racism uh, firsthand. In the whole In a form of seeing that there was a difference between how her, her white siblings were treated versus her black siblings. All right? Okay. Um, She's seen them whipped, mm-hmm. right? And not only with just like any whip, you know, like one was bamboo from Africa. Like they must have special ordered this from Amazon or something. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. So for the privileged black kid who hasn't seen half of what she's seen, uh-huh. how does she not qualify to stand for this cause? Because And even her if you throw her in because, the background. Because a person being... Black is not just linked to their experience, which is what we were kind of talking about earlier. Yeah, we yeah like when you down. separate right. color from culture. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it, it's color, it's culture, it's upbringing, it's all, it's, and to say that because she, because, and to say that because she might have experienced more abuse than another black person that makes her more black, that's to say that all Black people are abused, abused, yeah. and that's not the case at all. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. because now we're just saying like this is all black people. All black people are abused, and that's not the case. And that's also saying that all black people are from the hood. There's affluent black people yeah. everywhere you go. Like you know what I mean? Like, right. So, so there's so, no. So, so that's why it's not just one, one thing, thing, but like, it could be. No, it can't be. It can. It, it like. Like she can't, as a child who doesn't have an understanding of culture and race, right, right. she can't. For her, her quali- this qualification of seeing her black siblings beaten, but she was older sexually, when her parents adopted the black kids. She was. She, she was already an adult. She was like a teenager, right? Yeah, like 17, 18. 17, 18. So, so her her experience up until that point was the white experience. Her experience up until that point was being a white girl in my. Tana in the town of like, but she was eight. still being abused, right? Right, she was still being abused. But even if she's still being abused, like my nigga, she's not the only white person to be abused. Like yeah. you know, there's white people, like like, like you there, know what I'm saying? I, I am not arguing at right, all. Right. But if we agree that there are different circumstances that may qualify you to be part of this group, mm-hmm. we really have to. I, I, there's no real answers to which one or combination of can qualify. So okay, so if I had to give an answer, one. The number one answer would be like, yeah, your skin has to be black or some form of black. <laughs> okay. Like, it's, okay. To be black. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Th- that's a starting point. You're that's saying. the, like, but no, but, but yeah, like, you're black if your skin is black. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, now that I'm thinking about it, 
took me an hour and 20 minutes to get to this answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, like, that's what a black person is. A black person is someone who is... See, so when you, we took an hour and 20 minutes to talk about, black people knew this from the beginning. From the jump. Yeah, they from probably, the jump. Yo, for every black person that's going to hear this interview, they're going to be like, yo, my nigga, I'm black. Just get I'm to black, the point. Really like, yo, Why are they saying my it? My skin is black, son. Like, like, yo, that makes this guy me... said the N-word twice. And these <laughs> guys can't figure it out. <laughs> like, yo, like, like, when they leave their house in the morning, whether they came up in the hood, whether they were abused or not, whether they listen to hip hop or not, whether they have cornrows or not, whatever, if their skin is black, they're black. Yeah. So okay, so like, this is what know. I was saying before when I said there's a difference between black culture mm-hmm. and a, a, a hood culture. And the hood culture. Because yeah. the black culture is just that. It's right. just how a black person has to live his day to day life. Right. The stuff that they go through. That's that's something that they have in common with each other. And let me also say that I think also other minorities. Can relate to that as well because we go through some of the same things right, that the yeah. black culture goes through. Son, not all black people are hood culture though. Right, you know what I'm saying? You got some exactly. white people that are part of the hood culture that don't right. know about those black culture things like being followed in the store, but they know the hood culture. Right, okay. which are two totally different yeah. things. It's almost so. like saying the difference. Now this is gonna. <laughs> this is the difference between Hispanic and Latino. Mm-hmm. So Hispanic are. Which I'm still learning, by the way. Okay, <laughs> so Hispanics are people that come from uh, the Spanish. Conquerors, right. the Spain, right? Right, right, right? Latinos are just Latin people. So, and this is a a difference between that would be people from um, from Brazil. Okay, they're not Hispanics, but they're Latinos because right. they're from Portugal. Those are the conquerors. Right, 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 right. You see what I'm saying? So there's such a it's a new it's very <laughs> fine nuance, but we all relate to each other either way. Yeah, there are Spaniards that look at like Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, are like, Oof, that's, well, hold on, wait, yeah. one second, let's be kid. Let's be clear. Spaniards look down on all of us. No, they do for sure. <laughs> like, yo, even though anybody that's not from Spain, they look even down Even the way on we speak Spanish us, to them is ghetto to them. Like, yeah. I don't know. I have a yeah. Spaniard yeah. friend and uh, I'm in. So I don't He know, might like, be yeah. cool. He might be like... He's know, one of the cool know, ones. Like, yo, yo. He might be we have someone. our own racism, guys. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yo, let me tell you something, bro. Yo, when I was in the Heights, they used to get at me, yo. Time they're like, how you Puerto Rican and don't speak Spanish? Like, <laughs> like yo, that's crazy. And I'm like, all right, I'm a New York again. Like, yeah, you are. Like, yo, no, so, <laughs> so real quick, just because we're in the conversation, yeah, yeah. Spain Spanish are like our white people, facts, right? Facts. But then we have our our uh, South American people. They're like mm. different, sort of. Like, yeah, they're like more in. Indigenous, Indigenous. Yeah. yeah, and kind of like even Central America with yes. the Mexicans and that. But then we have our our Caribbean Dominicans, Spanish, Dominicans, Cubans, Cubans, Puerto, Puerto Ricans. Ricans. So it's funny that we have even within our own culture we have our different sects of, right. like we know instantly if I see somebody that's Honduran or something, mm-hmm. like I know they're not. I know you're not from the islands. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know sure. you're from the from the lands. I know, know they're from Central America. Exactly. Like I we know, know that Central. they're yeah. Yeah. So like. And I think part of that is because when you look at the Hispanics from the Caribbean, like, we are mixed. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're, we are a mixed people. Like, we are mixed uh, with the Spaniards, the French, the slaves, the yeah. indigenous people that were there. Where, like, when you go to Central America or South America, they look more indigenous because they weren't all killed yeah. or pushed out so so there's a, so there's a lot more of like the original people and that it, were there now I wanted to have this conversation with Steven and I'm, we're not, I'm not going to get into conversation now but I just right. do want to say this that Listen. we have our people at least I can speak for ourselves as Puerto Rican mm-hmm. our people were raped into existence we mm-hmm. didn't exist existence before this yeah. you know what I'm saying we had you had your Taino Indian well that's the thing so right. we have Hispanics uh-huh. or, or Spanish better said you got the Tainos that are natives, and then we have the Africans that came as slaves. Right. We're a mixture of all those people. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, so many people don't know that. The one we can closely associate with is the Tainos. Right. Because that's the only history we could reach back to. Because right. we can't say, well, I'm African. They have their own people. Right. The same thing with Spanish. That Tainos are, whatever was left of Tainos is in us. Yeah. So that's our culture. Right. But the reality of it is that Tainos, they weren't as light as we are. They weren't. They were definitely darker than us. So, know? I actually did some research on them. They come from South America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. They, you know, like, so, like, when we look at South Americans, and we're like, yo, they look more in 
Too generous. We're looking at our people. Yeah, right? we're looking at our past. Yeah, like we're looking at our past. Like this. Is you could actually see the like. breed of the of the Spaniards coming into the Taino culture, um, in us. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's that's a whole other. Like, we're 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 being specific to the Puerto Rican culture. What we're talking about right now, and that's that's something that we've been dying to yeah, go yeah. into. And maybe we should introduce the conversation to all our guests and see what their thoughts are. Mm -hmm. um, but um, if you haven't seen this documentary, it's 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 worth watching. What Take, is it called? The racial divide. Yes. Uh, make yeah. sure that you check out all her different hairdos. Yeah. Um and um. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, uh, what do you got? I think that's it, baby. Yeah, so this is basically what it's like to be on the the basement. We'd love to have you again. Oh, bro. I actually had a lot of fun, man. I have a lot of... Yeah, man. Whenever you want to come through, bro. Yeah, we'll set something up. Um, I'm supposed to watch the the Avengers movie this weekend. But... Um, we have a, a guest coming back to follow up. We could do the same thing yes. uh, next week. Let us know what you think. Also... Post a comment on what you think it's like on the show. Okay. Um, we'll do. Uh, we'll do. You know how horrible Noel is. Um, <laughs> Haters. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. This is The Basement. Y'all check us out. TheBasementNY.com. Yes, Peace. Peace. Peace.